Season two, you all. Did you hear me? Season two. This is Jenny Jam, just letting you know that this is season two of Between Frets from the Fret Sisters. Got a question, a comment, or a topic you want us to talk about? Contact us at fretsistersmusic at gmail.com or hit us up on IG or Facebook at Fret Sisters. That's right, season two. Hope you enjoy. Hello, good people. This is LaCole Rose. Thank you for joining us on Between Frets, a space where female musicians who play stringed instruments meet and discuss all things music. We have a great guest on our podcast today. We have Kyla Simone. She is a musician out of the D.C. area. She is a singer, songwriter, guitarist, graphic designer, and also she is the founder of Girls and Guitars. Not only does she make very inspirational and uplifting music on her own. She also has made a platform to spotlight other female musicians, which you know we Fret Sisters are all about. Kylie, I'm so happy to have you on the show today. How are you doing? I was on awesome. It's Saturday. I didn't have to get up early. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. That is a blessing in itself. As I stated, you wear so many hats, all creative hats, from music to songwriting to graphic design. Uh, which was your first love in that? Was it the traditional art or was it the music? Oh, that's a good question. Um, actually, I started out with a passion for fashion design, which is what I went to college for. Um, graphic design is something that came a little bit later um, in my, probably towards the end of high school, that I started having a little bit of an interest there. But I didn't really um, dive right into that until probably about 2010 when I started as a freelancer. Oh, wow. So it's recent that you've really mm-hmm. been doing this. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So, but you still fashion design. You've all, it's always been creative. Did you grow up always in a creative, creative. Did you grow up in a creative household where your parents uh, of the arts in any capacity? Yes, actually on both sides. So both of my parents are musicians um, and they're also singers. And um, I have all sorts of music on both sides of the family. Um, on my mom's side, guitar players, my uncles. Um, my dad plays guitar. My brother plays guitar. My younger brother is a drummer. My sister is in music as well. Um, so we just have music all throughout. And as far as art, that's definitely my mom's side of the family. Um, she's a graphic designer as well. And um, so I kind of grew up also around the arts. Oh, wow. So you really much didn't have a choice. It was arts. Or- Basically. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> that is amazing. So growing up in that kind of household where the arts are so prevalent, um, did you find going from fashion to music to graphic design, was that an easy transition or did one stick out more as time went on? Um, I think that towards the end of my college career, I gravitated a lot to music and that's when I actually became an artist. And um, my mom had given me a guitar when I went away to college. And so all throughout college, I was able to um, to play and sing and, and just kind of cultivate that then. And um, as far as fashion goes, it's something I'm still passionate about, um, but I just took a little bit of a, a shift Uh, towards more so graphic based fashion so when I say that like doing apparel um, art as far as like t-shirts creating accessories you'll see it like some of our girls and guitars events um, I had created like bracelets and earrings and stuff like that so I kind of use it now but for the thing I'm currently passionate about which is girls and guitars that is so awesome I just love creative people how how your mind works to do all that and you know in tandem with everything else so now now that in college where you got more into the music, did you, are you self-taught guitarist and singer? Did you have lessons, you know, sporadic in between those times? I'm actually self-taught. I took maybe one or two guitar lessons. You know, to be honest, I wish I had have stuck those out because learning on your own, you're responsible for your own, you know, you don't really have the accountability that you would have um, with a a teacher. You know what I'm saying? Like an ongoing lesson. Um, But I, you know, for the most part, I 
just I learned started off just learning chords and then I started to build on that um of course YouTube was my friend <laughs> um and I guess the plus side is because my dad plays I could call him here and there and and ask him but he doesn't live here so you know we had to do it online um but he would you know give me advice and help me with certain things and stuff like that so that's been a huge help as well Oh, that is great. That's great. It's definitely to have that support system in case, you know, you get a bump in the road like that. Listen, what's the yeah. support? How do you do this? <laughs> right. Because, you know, when you when you play on your own, you sort of um, sometimes you can get into a rut of like you get to a, a stopping point where you you sort of need someone who knows yes. more than you to kind of restructure some of the bad habits <laughs> that exactly. you created. Exactly. I mean, I always say it's always good to have people who are so much better than you around you. Mm -hmm. So you can like feed off of them. That's always a plus. Exactly. Um, so that you play guitar, uh, were you always sort of writing songs or poems or anything like that? Or did that come later after you start fiddling with the guitar? You know, it is funny. One of my best friends, um, we used to write music when we were like five or six years old. And, but it would be like silly stuff. But I've been writing for a long time. And I actually, um, as a young adult, I was in choirs and stuff like that um, at my uh, church here in D.C., one of the churches I attended. And we would write original music for the choir. This was when I was like maybe 19. Original music? Wow. Music, yeah. We would write original music and we were singing um, all over the place. So I started, I started writing pretty young because I always had an affinity for story um, telling and you know, I even wrote like a play back and I never did anything with it, but <laughs> <laughs> bust it back out. It's never too late. Right. <laughs> but I just, I always had a, a interest in writing and, um, and so, but I, I think that getting a guitar, it opened my world to a different style of music. And that's when I started to like form my actual style of writing as an artist. Yes. I've listened to the first song I ever heard of yours was Wildflower. Um, it's very soothing, uplifting, and very calming and inspirational. Um, is that the kind of music that you gravitate towards? Is something that came on later to like sort of, you know, motivate yourself? Yeah, you it? know what? That's exactly it. Um, music for me has been sort of a form of therapy. It's kind of a way for me to process things that I'm going through. Um, even questions. I have an actual song called Questions. Questions um, for God that I have. Um, things that don't make sense in life. Um, I just, I talk about just life in general. And my my hope is that some of the crazy questions I may have or some of the things that thoughts um, that come to my mind might actually stand as the voice for people who may not really know how to like express themselves. Yes. Yes. And that's definitely what I got out of it is it's very motivational anytime you're feeling down, especially being a woman in this music industry and to see other people independently doing it and putting out positivity is mm -hmm. definitely something that's rare nowadays. And I definitely thank you for that because your music is very uplifting. Oh, um, thank you. You're very welcome. So when you when you started playing and songwriting, which you've always done and incorporating just the art mindset that you have, can you tell us about sort of the first time you stepped out of just, you know, writing for others and doing it for yourself and got in front of people and did it on your own? What was that like? So I would say like back in, oh gosh, this was like eons ago. I'm about to date myself for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started, I, star I tried doing the artist thing back in the day, like around um, right before, it was like years before I went to college, like maybe um, somewhere around, 2000 and like two or three or something like that mm -hmm. um i had joined an independent music label and back then i was just scared i was just scared to death and i that was short-lived because i just i was scared to get on stage i hated it oh. um for people who know me i'm more of an in introvert mm -hmm. so it it's it's hard for and i'm sure there's other artists in music who are introverts who would never even know it yeah. Um, so, but I was able to, I think once I got my guitar, it was sort of like a, um, it was sort of like my blanket, my security blanket. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so um, I was able to sort of push past that and it just sort of opened the door for uh, me to, I guess, be more confident about just stepping out in front of people and singing and just sharing my heart and my testimony 
and that being enough in a sense okay. and I don't know if that answered your question yes it I did like I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes it did I mean surprisingly in doing these interviews a lot of people a lot of musicians are very introverted which yeah. I find funny it's like they have to get that creativity out even though it frightens them to do it like I just gotta get it out I can't keep it in yeah, <laughs> you know? that's exactly because you know it's even now like when I step up get ready to step on stage I always ask myself why are you doing this because <laughs> I'm scared to death but then I get out there and everything is fine and everything works out and um and it just it, it reminds me that you can't allow your fears to uh handicap you you know what I'm saying from doing things that you enjoy exactly Hey, don't adjust your devices. I repeat, do not adjust your devices. We have more between frets after this. Now that you've been doing that, you have this amazing platform that you've made called Girls and Guitars where you spotlight other female musicians, you have events. Again, you make your own t-shirts and bracelets and everything just to, you know, uplift other women musicians. Where did that come from? Where did that passion to even do that come from? It's really simple. So as an artist, um, I grew, I was around a lot, like more so hip hop artists or everything, but like other people who, who did what I did you know, which is to play and sing. And I just thought, you know, it would be such a blessing to be able to to connect with and network with other female artists who play guitar, especially um, women of color who, you know, where we can share like the same vibe. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and, definitely. and, you know, learn from one another. And so that's really where they came from. And I feel that I definitely feel like it was a God breathed vision and that once that kind of unlocked for me, now all of a sudden, like a world of those types of artists start coming to the forefront. They were always there. It's just that when God unlocked that, my eyes opened and I could see now I was kind of looking, you know, searching out. And as I was looking other and connecting with artists, they were then connecting me with other artists. Mm -hmm. And then before you know it, I was like, well, dang, yeah. it's a whole bunch of us out here. It's just that we don't have as much of the platform. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not as big. So you have to kind of dig a little deeper. So that's really Girls and Guitars is really just women discovering one another, you know, discovering like-minded artists. And the beautiful thing is, is sharing music, positive music and, and empowering music. Um, a lot of the artists do faith-based. They also do, you know, n not specifically Christian, but we just want to create a positive and inspiring and uplifting platform that encourages the world towards goodness. I love your page as an older musician myself, just getting into this as an older person. I love that it's not only young musicians you have a varying age range of people that come mm -hmm. to your events and oh yeah yeah was that something that you thought to do because i mean not to knock anyone at all i love all of it a lot of people cater to younger musicians and you don't right. see a lot of people who have you know 20 30 40 50 and up who still love the music and still want to do it but have that you know outlet to do it was that something that you thought about as well you know, I didn't. I think it just evolved into that. I mean, for me, and I don't mind telling my age, I'm 37. I'm about to be 38. Get it. And, you know, I fought with that fear of like, oh, dang, I'm getting, oh, I'm getting, yeah, you know. Exactly. But no, like, you're never too old to, I have friends who are like in their 40s and they're still living their dream and they're pursuing their dreams and stuff. Like, you're not too old to, to pursue. And that's why I feel like, I don't care if the girl is 12. I don't care if she's 60. If she's if she feels compelled to to uh, hone her gift and her mm -hmm. talent, then we should have a platform for that. Because we need it. You know, as yes. women, we need it. The world is always telling us what we should look like. And, you know, you got to be a certain age range or you have to be, you know, this or that in order to be successful. And it's not true. 
like you can that's what you know the song wildflower you mentioned it's about growing where you're planted and blooming where you're planted because it's more than about you like other people around you need to experience your gift and your talent what you have to say and that may look like you being on let girls rock (laughs) you know or that may just be you in your community you know but you need to be okay with whatever that platform is that God is giving you. So I just hope that Girls and Guitars can create a safe space for artists to really, um, I want them to to just be great in their own space, wherever that is, and to be confident in it, in their gift and their talent, you know? I am so happy you said that because more musicians, women, musicians in general need to hear that because you have one person that's playing at their their local restaurant or at their church or they may do a gig here and there and they have friends or associates who are on tour and they think well i'm not doing anything and it's like no you're doing what you're doing and it's a great thing because you couldn't be doing that i mean that's you know so take every blessing as it is and as an accomplishment you know what i mean exactly i love that you said that i was just gonna add that you know nobody can do what you do yes you know nobody can do what you do exactly the way that you do it the way that god gave it to you um nobody can do it so you gotta do your job (laughs) (laughs) do what's been putting you to do amen (laughs) definitely (laughs) um so now that you mentioned wallflower again that's just one of your songs uh do you are you working on any new music any other music that you want to mention or that you know you found that i really enjoyed making this song or this type of music i want to say that the last two songs that i released no three three songs, Wildflower, but no, the last two songs, I'm sorry. The last two songs I released, yes, I love Wildflower, um, but the last two I released were just Questions and a song called Waiting. I actually recorded those in Nashville last summer, and that experience was me stepping out of my comfort zone to do something a little more challenging. And, you know, I've had a lot of my friends say, wow, I can really hear, like, a difference in... Because, you know, I'm still... I've been doing music for... 10 plus years, but I'm still growing as an artist. I still consider myself a new artist because I'm still growing and trying to- um, You're finding your voice. Yeah, find my voice and strengthen my skill set and that kind of thing. And so going to Nashville and just sort of stepping out of my comfort zone to record with someone new, um, record in a new environment, uh, it really did to me, it really um, took my music to a different level, which was awesome. I'm not currently recording anything. I've been a- on a little bit of a break because I want to focus on girls and guitars. And I'm also uh, working with a couple of friends to build an organization for um, for young girls called My Life Arts, Inc. Oh, wow. And it's a creative arts and life skills uh, mentoring program. So, I'm, you know... Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and I've had... Excuse me. You know, you when you're he- carrying multiple hats, you do get a little bit overwhelmed. And I had to step back and say, it's okay, Kyla, for you not to be recording right now or not, you know, to just take one thing at a time. So that's what I'm doing is I'm focused on the next step for the next stage for girls and guitars, working on this mentoring thing. I'm still writing, but I feel there will be a right time for me to record something new. Oh, that is, I can't wait to hear more about that when, you know, once you divulge it, because that sounds very interesting. I understand that during your girls and guitars and um, you've worked with one of our founders, Jenny Jam. Yes, I love her. And she had such amazing, amazing things to say about you and the organization. And, you know, we just had to speak with you because, again, we love positivity. We love uplifting. We just love music and those who are out there to put out, again, just just positive vibes, like you stated. And now that you're doing that, you have your, you know, you're growing in your business. You have more creative ideas coming. What's, what's there for you to do when you just need that downtime? What do you do when you say, okay, enough of the business. I just want to relax. What do you do to wind down? <laughs> you know what? I binge on Lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> when I try to do nothing, which is very rare, but in those moments where I just can't <laughs> anymore, yeah. I just do nothing, literally. I will sit on my couch in my pajamas. I will make sure I get... I'm vegan, so I like to go to um, a a vegan soul food place nearby and um, I'll get my little vegan mac and cheese. (laughs) (laughs) And I will sit on the couch and literally do nothing because I just, my brain can't anymore. It just can't. 
we all need a reprieve, especially as busy right. and as much as you're doing, <laughs> you're, you're, you're allowed that break. <laughs> yeah. um, I guess the other thing I enjoy doing is traveling. So I'm a road trip gal. Okay. So I will hop in my car and like just want to drive down south or, you know, um, wherever, <laughs> wherever my car takes me. I will like yeah. I like road trips because it gives you time to just think and kind of take it all in. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And now that we know all the business and the music, you're taking a break from your own music. Are there any events or anything that you want to mention coming up? Any websites, any uh, IG or anything that you want to, you know, tell people how to follow you? Is any events coming up that you want to tell our listeners about so they can follow you and keep in the know what you have going on? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we have um, our Girls and Guitars uh, showcase coming up. It is actually next Sunday. Oh, it's at Bus Boys and Poets at 6 p.m. And we're featuring some really talented um, artists here locally. Um, and we're also bringing one tar- one artist out from Chicago. Her name is Della Grantis. She's amazing. She's so amazing. And her, her songwriting is just beautiful, um, very heartfelt, very life-driven. Um, so I would love for you guys to all come out um, and support the event. It is, um, it's definitely relies on your support and um, the girls would absolutely appreciate it. And yeah, so that's again, it's next Sunday, October 6th. It's actually four days after my birthday. Oh, you fell over. And, <laughs> 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 and you can go to our website, Girls and Guitars Official. Dot com. That's girlsandguitarsofficial.com. You can get your tickets there. You can learn more about our brand um, and that kind of thing. And we have t-shirts, stuff like that. So please definitely go to our website, support, show love, and come out to our show next Sunday. Awesome. We'll definitely do that. I know I'm in Georgia area where the presses are all spread about, but we'll definitely share, you know, the links and, you know, people in the area, the D.C. area, please come and support. Uh, she's doing great things for musicians female musicians and just an all around good person so definitely support those who are doing good we really appreciate you doing that and Kyla again we want to thank you for coming I really I really enjoyed our conversation and thank you for again just uplifting just being that positive magnet that we need I really appreciate that Oh, thank you. And I appreciate you guys, too, because we need more women kind of taking the reins and and creating a a wonderful platform for women musicians. Um, So thank you for what you guys do as well. You are very welcome. And again, thank you all for listening. Uh, Thank you, Kyla, Simone, and we'll be back with you later. Until next time.